Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and today we've got two beers. It's actually the same beer, but just a little bit of a variation between the two. One, you might know this from previous videos. This is the Southern Passion New England IPA that we tasted a couple of weeks ago, or a few weeks ago at this point. And then I think one of the thoughts we had was uh, maybe we should add uh, some hops to this just to kind of make the, comp, uh, the flavor profile a little more complex. And so I had some cryo hops, uh, the uh, Amarillo brand from Yakima Valley Hop Chief, or Yakima Chief Hops. Oof. Oh boy. I, I messed that oh up. Boy. Oh, I'm sorry. Yakima Chief Hops. And uh, these are cryo hops, uh, alpha acid of 17.4%. Wow. It's a one ounce dose of this. You want to sniff this? Go ahead, sniff it. What I did was I just took my fine mesh nylon bag, put the one ounce of the uh, cryo hops right in there, um, sanitized the bag first, of course, and then uh, I've lost my marbles. Did you know that? Like, yeah. The marbles that About I... seven years ago. Yeah, the marbles that I had to like weigh down the bag to put in my keg, I think my wife threw, <laughs> threw away the kids' toys. Um, so what I did instead was I... Um, I sanitized a, sp a spoon, a, a very heavy stainless steel spoon. Put that in the bag. Put the nice. hops in the in the in the bag. Tied up the bag. Put it into the the keg, and it sank right to the bottom. And here we go. So we have the first version of the New England IPA, and now the new and well, I don't know if it's improved. The different new version of it with probably three days worth of dry hop in the keg with Amarillo. One ounce of cryo Amarillo. Yes, one ounce of cryo Amarillo hop. So, I don't know so, if you... So, let me get this straight. So, you drew off some of the beer to hold it? Or is this... Yes. Is, okay. <laughs> yes. So, you drew off yes. some beer to hold it, yep. and then, but then, then the rest of the keg got, got a, hit. a dry got hop. Got hit. Remind me, did, did you dry hop the... Mm -hmm. with the um, Southern Passion? Yes, but in the fermenter. In the fermenter. All right. the dry yeah, hopping yeah. was done during fermentation. Three days uh, since the beginning of it and then at day seven of fermentation. There were no dry hops in the keg. This is a new dry hop addition within the keg on carbon dioxide. This was also like the pound or something of hop? This was oh, like yeah. a ridiculous amount, right? It was okay. ridiculous. So even okay. more hops for you. Awesome. Hmm. So it's, um, I'm actually, because I've, I was drinking before I came over. Um, so yeah, so I'm not really sure how much I'm tasting a dip, but like I know that like I felt like there was a stronger. Um, so I the thing with cryo hops, hops, right? Yeah, yeah, is yeah. it's supposed to um, they hit them with some liquid nitrogen? They do some stuff to eliminate to remove some of the vegetal material. Yes. Concentrate the lupulin, the glands, mm -hmm. the all oils, that. all the good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're supposed to get less of a hop vegetal astringency, yep. right? That's, Which I imagine actually yep. is one of the hallmark tastes of most of the New England IPAs that we sample, that we drink, not that we're brewing, right? The ones that you get commercially. Yeah. And it's I think it's the, the chief flavor component that um, I didn't mind when I first started drinking that style, mm. but I'm sort of burnt out on that experience. There's three or four brands of New England IPA that somehow mystically don't do that. Um, I think those are pretty special. Um, so, so that's the point of cryo hops. They're supposed to have less of that hop bite. Yeah. We'll call it right. Yeah, yeah. But I will say, and it's probably just because you're adding more hops. I think that this sample, um, I noticed that there's more hop bite here than there was yep. here. Yep. Right. For yep. sure. For sure. It's definitely there. So it's not like some sort of magic bullet where this is screaming out to me, amarillo, orange, tangerine, and no bite. Um, and so, interestingly, for my money, hmm. I'm getting a, like an orange sherbet, like this, this has got just a little bit more age on it. I think the, hmm. maybe the oils are presenting themselves a little differently. I'm, I'm getting a really nice aroma on this one hmm. that seems to have been pushed out of Crushed this one. Right? The cryo. Now you put them in the keg, right? So that it, mm -hmm. it's not like you had a chance for it to volatile, volatilize away or something. But yeah, this this new one, it's almost like you've hit a a 
saturation point and started to go down the other side because I just don't have as much aroma. Yeah, like the southern passion I think is a little bit lost in here. Oh yeah, absolutely. But that's why I was. Like I said, it's not yeah. screaming out to me. No. I'm getting it in the flavor. Mm. I'm getting some amarillo in the flavor, and I'm enjoying that. Um, but it's not on the nose. And now that I, you know, I, I keep stirring around. Yeah, but yeah. it's not as. It sounds ridiculous on the nose as I would expect it to be for mm. putting that much in post whatever. Um, I think there's still a lot of understanding to be made about these oils and how they interact and how they last in a keg or in how, um, like I said, there's, there's definitely a saturation point that we might be, we may have crossed over it. <laughs> and you, these things could be falling out. Yeah. Right? Right. What do you think? What do you think between the two? I think that I'm getting a lot more uh, pithy rind off the, the second one, which is kind of what I was going for. I think yep. I've got that, like in the flavor. Like I didn't really compare the yep. the aromas, and I can uh, I am picking up what you're talking about. I love the aroma of this. Yeah, I think it's unique and it's well, kind of cool. Let's, let's enjoy it because now there's only like I don't know four more ounces left. All uh, right. <laughs> Um, cause now I've got like probably three gallons of this, but who knows? I mean, un the unfortunate part is yeah. because I don't have any way to retrieve said hot bag. Guess what? <laughs> it's, it's in just, there. It's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be in there until the keg is empty. Yeah. It's both beers are excellent and they're good hoppy hop flavor and aroma mm -hmm. presentations of beer. Yeah. There's like zero bitterness on both sides, which makes sense because it's all post. It's all you know based on this beer, and there's yeah. like no bitterness in yeah. this beer, even now that it's set for like two weeks. I mean, whatever um, perceived bitterness there was has definitely mellowed out. Um, but this is good. It's just not. It'd be interesting to see how that would present itself with maybe maybe it is just getting um, muddled together, and I can't pick it up. You know, yeah. um, the cool thing is, is that the color of the two beers is almost identical, mm. right? Um, I will say what's interesting is that, and it could just be the way it's been poured, but this one, the newer one, is slightly, ever so slightly less hazy than this, which might again hint towards a saturation point going down the other side. Um, you know, we, I think we need to think about and talk more, not right now, but like. <laughs> Scott Janish's well, most like recent, the the new new IPA them. book that he has yes, out there, like that, that, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I've listened to him in a couple podcast interviews, um, and some of what he's discovered with the rate and time of dry hopping and stuff like that, and he does report yes. going. Oh, yes. You can go over and lose it. You can yeah. get, right. So yeah. uh, this idea of pounding away more is always going to give you more. Not necessarily uh, true, right? Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not the case. Maybe that's what I'm experiencing here. At least there's definitely a pithiness. There's the orange tangerine is, is in there. It's just its overall presentation, I, I don't think is as pleasant as this. Huh. Pleasant, I feel like. I think yeah. that, uh, I think if this fits the, uh, the NI IPA, any IPA style better, this is almost like too nice <laughs> for it. Yeah, you know, you just, I would more, even though you put a truckload of hops in here, this this is just maybe maybe you just call this New England Pale Ale. Yeah, I right? know because it's just more subdued. Yep, and this right? is for whatever that's worth. And it's ridiculous to say that because they're the same base beer, same strength, same whatever. Um, but in the end, when you you know you, you you have a target category that you're brewing for, in the end you call it what it is when yep. you taste it. Yeah, yeah, right? I know. So um, I you know I've drank more of this one. I mean I like it. I'm just surprised that the cryo hops aren't like, boom, beating me in the face. Yeah, I think it's presenting itself more in the flavor for me. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm definitely like, there's more of a lasting hoppy aftertaste in uh, beer number two than beer number one. Well, yeah, I, I definitely get that. I think that, that your, the pithiness, uh, the, uh, for me, that's the hop bite. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. There's yeah. hop bite here that wasn't there. In that one. All right. Well, that's cool our experiment. little experiment with uh, dry hopping. We'll have right to do more cryo can. hop stuff in the future. Yeah, I think that some of the th thoughts I have because I do have, and I've been reading like our friend Danny Khan has been also uh, working with this, and mm -hmm. definitely he says that cryo works better in whirlpool and yeah. in dry hopping. 
Um, that might work pretty well for what I do with the one gallon batches because mm -hmm. a lot of the hops that I'm putting are going to, are late in the boil, um, especially because now some of these really fruity hops, I'm not even putting a lot at the beginning. I really just want to get the, the flavor and the aroma thing going and that's why they get, they get thrown in it like flame out yep. um, a lot of the times. Now, I have cryo hops of like I think mosaic and I have regular old pellets ah, and I want to compare the there two of those. There we yeah. go. So that's That'll what be I like to try. a great experiment. Just to see how that turns out. So that might be something that if I have time, that'll be the next cryo experiment. Cool. So, all right. Well, that's that. I thought that because that was one of the thoughts that we had based on the first tasting of this, mm -hmm. maybe just to get the flavor a little more complex, hit it with some Amarillo, like push that orange. I'm not sure we're getting a lot of <laughs> orange. orange yeah. We're getting a lot of orange pith. Yes. And uh, I don't know. I think. Like rind. Yeah. I think I like the flavor. I think I like what has happened. You never know how it's going to turn out, mm -hmm. um, but I, I will uh, also agree with you on the uh, the aroma being like less fruity and more okay, hot, cool, bitey. So we're on the same page there. We're on the same page. Yep. All right. Thanks for watching this video. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because we do this kind of thing every single week. And um, you know, if you have experience using cryo hops and you have experience using hops to dry hop in a keg let us know in the comments below for john and mike brew dash brew on cheers